All right, YouTube fam, your boy is back on the grind one more time. I wanna try to see if I can get in a lot of information to you guys in a short period of time. This video is in regards to just a walk around in the cars. A lot of people have not even seen this car in a long time. I know a lot of you have been following the build, uh, but there had been long breaks in between, like what was going on with the car and whatnot. And obviously I couldn't update you every single time something happened to it or got done to it, but this is what that video is about. Uh, so I'm actually just gonna go over the car, what has been done to it, especially for all my new subscribers who uh, don't really know uh, about uh, what's been done to the car. And you should go back and check out all my old videos, but I'm just doing this just to be nice and because it hasn't been on the channel for quite some time. But definitely go check out all my old videos. This uh, has been pretty much well documented. Anything that I had done to the car or um, any information I received, anything like that is on my Chevelle project playlist. So definitely go check that out. Um, and also some things that I've done already to the car, as you guys can see, I got the hood off and some other little uh, odds and ends done to the car. Also still working on my rim where I got to sand the outside of the lip uh, here down and polish that up too. So anyways, we are on our way. So if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely think about subscribing, hitting that notification bell, all that good stuff, y'all. Let's go ahead and get into this video. Let's get it. First off, it's a 71 Chevelle uh, that I got as a roller, no engine, just wheels. Uh, a uh, four nine inch, a bunch of extra, extra parts from two different Chevelles, because this is a blend of two different Chevelles made into one, and wheels, body, frame, and that's it. It came with glass, uh, the quarter glass and the door glass, but no front or rear uh, windshield. Did come with some trim, actually the OG trim around the uh, windshield and the rear window is uh, all OG to the car. Uh, also, so is this piece here on both sides. This one as well, this drip wheel is new, and then the one on my hood is also new. These are actually used. I just got them all powder coated, so I just tried to reuse everything that I could. These are bought for 25 bucks, but these are going bye-bye. I probably shouldn't have used them anyway, but uh, yeah, they're just, man, I mean, look how much, I'm barely moving it, and there's that much wiggle room. That one's even worse. Um, it's just after researching these more, man, I just, I probably shouldn't have went with them. I could have saved my buddy, Chris, um, the battle of dealing with this and getting the hood straight. But anyways, it is what it is. I'm going pretty expensive, you guys, on these hood hinges. Uh, and I'll let you guys know what I'm going to get. Anyways, um, I decided to go with this orange theme. I don't really know kind of where it came from, uh, but I really like the color. I'm a bright, really bright type of color. But I don't know. I just really like this Chevy orange color. And I thought the contrast between the champagne and this would look good. Also too, it doesn't look overbearing because the thing is, is you won't see it when the hood's down. You might see a little bit of it through the grill and then obviously here I have my, um, the inner fender wells covered underneath as well with Chevy orange. But other than that, you're not gonna see it except for on the uh, Willwood, uh calipers i did the willwood lettering orange and then you'll probably see uh, my rear and front sway bars i'm going to get those orange but that is it everything else is just this black and champagne and black chrome color uh so that's what i wanted and the inside is going to be mainly black a little bit of a uh, silver aluminum color because all my trim as well like around the console things like that the top plate is all aluminum color and then i have some on my uh, door panels as well and then there's some orange stitching and orange lighting on my door panel so that's going to tie in to when the hood's open so there's definitely a flow to this you guys and i think it turned out damn good in my opinion in my opinion but that's all that really matters because it's my car so uh anyways this engine is a 6 engine it is out of a 2003 or 4 chevy express van it's a lq4 i believe but it's a gen 3 engine with gen 4 pistons and uh, rod stock bottom in uh, all the uh, head work it was done by me it's not ported or polished or anything but it's all brian Tooley push rods uh, double springs or dual springs trunnion upgrade um, new seats all that stuff y'all that works i just use the stock valves in there as well everything looked perfect in there you guys and obviously you guys hear it it sounds really good um, i wanted to go with this setup again because i just wanted to be a little bit different not really to be different but i just wanted to kind of give it an old school look in a new school car but also if i ever wanted to go just totally back 
uh, to just a regular EFI setup, I would have that option with this style motor. So that's one reason why I did this setup. Also too, I wanted to uh, eventually do a blow through setup with my Pro Charger. You guys will see more of that with my CVF Racing uh, Serpentine kit. Uh, once that goes on, man, it's gonna be um, something pretty, pretty awesome. So I'm hoping that I can use this particular setup here. There's kind of mixed reviews on using this particular setup, but there's not actually a whole lot of information on this. So I might be one of the few people actually running this particular style setup. I think most people kind of go with uh, multi-port or they have the injectors inside of the uh, the uh, intake and that'll be my second option if I need to all I would have to do is just get another harness and I think one other thing as well and then I could run uh, multi-port injection my ECU uh, will be good actually the ECU that I have is actually a really really good EC ECU uh, it can run in multiple different configurations it's actually a really nice one um, and I should be able to still use my throttle body I would just cap off the uh, the fuel portion to the throttle body and just run those uh, directly into the uh, the fuel rail and the injectors that are going inside of the intake so um, anyways yeah headers are all all uh, new everything is pretty new I'm kind of worried that a lot of this stuff might not clean up very well I hope it does um, I gave it a good spray down, so it looks a lot better than what it did. Uh, but I think with a good, good cleaning, um, it will turn out okay. At least I hope it does. Uh, my buddy had the engine covered, and he actually had it covered pretty well. But you know, working on a car and it's been there for two and a half years, there's definitely sand, dust, and everything that's going to get everywhere. I also uh, sprayed underneath the car too. More on the engine a little bit later because I want to definitely talk about the car. Got these powder coated. As you guys can see, one of them is stock OG, and uh, the other one is a uh, is a uh, new. Uh, the core support came with the car. A lot of these parts came with the car. Actually, all this stuff came with the car. This is a used bumper that I got um, online. It has new brackets, and that helped it actually line up better. All the paneling on this car is uh, came with the car. There's nothing. On this car as far as body panels and metal that is new with the exception of the bottom pieces here the normal pieces that kind of rot just over time and then this section here that follows this line all the way down is brand new this car has been sanded down to bare metal you guys the whole thing uh, but when he sent it down to bare metal uh, there was just a bunch of pinholes and everything it was just rusted out I actually bought him a new quarter he welded that in and everything, and then uh, part of my inner fender well in the rear was also rusted, so he built me a new one. I don't think you can see that, but yeah, down in there, he built me um, a new section of that as well. And again, uh, the other side was great, and then the other side on the lower end of the front fender is also uh, brand new. Just again, a little patch panel down there on the bottom on the other side too. So, But all this metal, brand new, you guys, and look how straight my boy got that i mean look at the lines for a garage build you guys you really really can't get no more perfect than that all this trim is original with the car this trim right here like i said the rear window trim except this is new he had some trouble putting this on uh it didn't go on very well uh both sides he said took him an hour each and he got super frustrated with it um so it was just kind of like an hour job he went in for the night and then came back another day did the other side and so I actually bought new of these because these were kind of banged up a little bit. They weren't terrible, but they weren't great. And so um, I bought the new ones and they fit horrible. They didn't even fit at all, you guys. And I don't even know why, but I couldn't return them because I had got them powder coated because I wasn't expecting them not to fit. So then I remembered, okay, and I was hoping that I had these OG ones, which I did. That's why I save everything. And they actually weren't terrible. Uh, they had some little dings and stuff here and there. So my buddy Chris actually kind of fixed them up a little bit and made them look really good. And so they came out uh, really well. Uh, a lot of these emblems or this emblem's new. This trunk actually came with the car. I think this is a separate trunk that he gave me because the original trunk that was on it uh, was too far gone. This rear bumper is new. All the bracketry is new. Uh, my buddy, let me see if I can find my flashlight. So my buddy actually re-splatter painted the, uh, the trunk. And uh, this is what it looks like right here, if you guys can see. Now, don't mind that piece, because uh, that's something that I'm gonna fix a little bit later on. Uh, but this is where 
my fuel sending unit is right there. And the reason why I had to cut that hole is because um, this is a stock or this is a uh, B-body tank out of a, I think I got it out of a 95 Roadmaster, I believe, but it's the same, it's the same tank that the SS Impala used, the bubble uh, SS Impala and the Caprice also used as well. Uh, but look at this trunk, man. He did an awesome, awesome job. I kind of wish I would have cleaned up the trunk first before he did it, uh, but he actually cleaned it pretty good, but I wanted to actually clean it and then pour 15 it and all that stuff. And I also still have to seam seal uh, in here, so I'm gonna have to probably scrape a lot of the stuff off unless he already did, but I might just be able to, to, to seam seal over it. I don't know, we'll see. But anyways, it actually turned out really good. I got this stuff from uh, AC Delco, and uh, man, it actually, he said it didn't spray well, but it turned out <laughs> really good. Again, the lines on both sides, you guys, really good. Uh, these Ken Digga door handles, love them. Open up so, so, so nice. Uh, here, you just turn that in, open it. Good to go there, close, like a glove. Um, all new rubbers everywhere. Everything's painted, door jams painted. All new rubbers, everything is good. All new weather stripping, everything's new, you guys. Uh, I'm actually gonna re, re uh, kill mat this floor. This is actually cheap stuff that I got uh, from like Lowe's. I was just trying to do a budget thing, but uh, I'm actually gonna just redo it. Uh, the ceiling is also good as well. I'm actually gonna get a suede uh, headliner that's coming in the mail. Uh, they are uh, backed up about 17 weeks and I bought that at like the beginning of December or November or something. So I'll probably get that here in the next couple months uh, from TMI. New fender trim, that's all black chrome. Uh, I got a mirror, stock mirror, that's uh, adjustable that I'm gonna use. So I'm, actually, it's actually in really good shape. That's the mirror right there in pretty dang good shape. Has some scratches in it, but what I think I might do just to be different is I might put a vinyl, um, tint over it just a little bit over it to hopefully cover the scratches but also just to be like a different look i've never seen nobody kind of tint that before um there's really no need to but i thought it would be kind of cool and then i'm going to get these black chrome this knob is broke on it but i have an idea uh to make it work so uh, we'll see but all these lines are perfectly straight you guys uh everything looks good he painted this as well uh man it looks looks really really good also, one other thing that he had to do on both sides of the car is uh, replace and build me a whole new like rocker on the bottom. He built and rebuilt, cut everything out and rebuilt and made that whole bottom piece because it was just too far gone and rusted out. So man, he did solid, a solid job. Um, also, if you guys watched some of my most recent videos, the, the body was actually on the frame a little bit crooked, which caused the hood not to close straight. It was actually kind of leaning around one side. He fixed that and the hood actually closed straight. Uh, also, this bumper being used, uh, the old brackets were in it. And that's why I bought it because the bumper came with the brackets. And if um, you guys know, or if you're a car guy, you probably should know everything costs money. They nickel and dime you in every single way that they can. So um, that's why I bought it. The bumper is actually in pretty good shape. It has a few imperfections here and there, but it's not terrible. Uh, but uh, my buddy ended up wanting me to buy new brackets. And we're both glad that we did because now the bumper goes on pretty dang good. Uh, there's a little bit of a bigger gap on this side versus this side. You can kind of see. Uh, probably about like a half inch, uh, but to the normal person and the normal eye, nobody would ever know. Um, again, small, really tiny, tiny imperfections on the car, but nothing really major, you guys. Uh, and I love that I went with the two-tone. This is not a matte black, but it's a satin black 20%. And if you guys can kind of see in the light, it's not quite a low gloss, um, but it's a, it's not a matte either. So. It's a 20% it's a satin, uh, so it gives it a little bit more of a sheen than like your typical low gloss and matte black wood, uh, but it, uh, it turned out really, really good. I just wanted something a little bit different. I didn't want to go quite too flat, uh, but I think the uh, black chrome, and this is all powder coated, you guys, so this is powder coated black chrome. This is their new version three. They never did it before. 
at the powder coating shop. So uh, I'm the first and I got a lot of stuff done and I actually got, again, the handle done as well. But I actually think it looks really good because it ties the two colors together and into one. So and actually this chrome, uh, this black chrome has a little bit of a, a, a hue in it, like a brown in it. Uh, and I think that's why it, it makes the two colors blend in so nice with that black chrome. Uh, other than that, body-wise, you guys, pretty straightforward. Again, everything was, was sanded down to bare metal uh, and then done properly. There's no corners cut on this build, you guys. Uh, this is a solid, solid body work and paint job. One other thing with the door, uh, first off, for some reason, the door latch actually seized up and would not open on my boy, Chris. And um, that was just another thing that we had to battle getting this car back together, you guys. It was just, it was a pain. One thing happened after another. Like I said, the trim wouldn't go on, uh, the hood issue, the body being on the car, not straight, the bumper, all that stuff. Uh, another issue was the rear bumper. We had to actually cut out and re railed in some cage nuts because they were rusted in the car. So just little things like that, that um, we just were trying to put the car back together and it just didn't didn't go as planned or I would have probably had the car back a month ago, actually right around Christmas. But it is what it is. Things happen for a reason and now we got everything straight. Uh, he asked me if I wanted to keep the door lock and I debated to keep it or not. And I debated for a little while and I was like, you know what? Let me just keep it. And I, it took me about a couple of days to think about it. The only reason I kept it and I do think it would look just nice and clean without it, but I just don't trust myself, you guys. Uh, I've locked my keys in the car, not recently, but um, there has been times where I go in spurts with locking keys in the car multiple days in a row for whatever reasons, I don't know, or you know, I am gonna put an alarm on it, so it'll end up having um, some um, some lock poppers and whatever, but uh, you know, just in case, you know, something happens and I get stranded somewhere and the car is there and I lock the keys in the car or whatever, or the alarm doesn't work and it doesn't open the locks. I mean, I just want to have this sense of security, uh, that I have this there. Uh, so I can at least, if I get stranded and lock the keys in the car, I can call my lady or somebody close by and, and then they can bring me the key and at least I'll be able to sit with the car and I don't want to leave it anywhere. You guys, I just not, I just don't want to be caught in a situation where I can't get in the car. So uh, that's another reason why, and pretty much the main reason why I left that. But I actually think it looks really good. And then from here, you wouldn't even be able to tell. This is actually that satin color here, and then this is that black chrome. But from here, you can't tell. Uh, they had to do that because uh, this is a little bit more kind of thick and sticky, I guess, when it's a little bit um, wet and they're laying it down because uh, they didn't want to take a risk in gumming the locks up. So that's why we went with that. But it actually looks really good. Um, another thing is custom flush mount side marker lights on the rear quarter. Again, those are custom, you guys. Um, I found that after the fact they, made a, they make a kit. Uh, but I actually think I like this a little bit better. Um, this is not, I don't also want to say it's a popular upgrade or um, addition to the Chevelle, but it has been done before. And I couldn't find that they had a kit. And I didn't know how people were doing it. So what I started to research is, um, is bagger lights for like a motorcycle. And so I uh, actually ordered these from a company called Milwaukee Bagger. And they, were, they weren't cheap, you guys, they weren't cheap. But it comes with a thick lens like that and you can shape it however you want three quarters of an inch thick. And if you need to shape it to contour it to any, any bike or any, any lines that you need to do, you can. And so my buddy did that and then cleared it over and then shoot, everything looks good. He mounted the light from the inside. I don't know if you guys can kind of see over there, but he mounted it from the inside. He basically put in two studs and then, um, and then put the light on and it works perfect. Uh, this car has coming out pretty, pretty good. Um, other than that, you guys, uh, I think that pretty much kind of covers it in the nutshell. The only other thing uh, that I'll have to do is again, clean up on the car. This hole underneath the car was super, super, super clean uh, when I dropped it off to my buddy. And I'm not blaming him or anything. It just comes with working on cars, body work, things like that. Um, all this is painted. It was super nice. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get a lot of this stuff off and then under the car. Uh, there's definitely some dust and things like that. So I'm hoping it's not a whole lot of overspray. There is a little bit right here on the outside of the frame right there. And then it kind of fades away. But, you know, at least I can get that with some more chassis paint and kind of 
you know, scrape that down a little bit and kind of uh, paint over it. So, uh, but it is what it is. I mean, minor, minor things for a car paint job uh, that looks like this. Anyways, yeah, so that disc, disc brake kit is actually the first task that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna start that this weekend, this Saturday. Um, so that'll be pretty dope. Uh, but I got the emergency brake kit since this car was equipped with emergency brake. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to take out the rear axle so I'm gonna have to take all that out again and shoot, that's gonna kinda suck. But because that emergency brake hub actually goes over the axle and then mounts back behind um, the uh, the hub of the axle. So you have to take the axle out in order to, to mount it anyway. So, um, but the plus side is, is I don't know what spline these are. And so I had them out before and I just never counted them. It just slipped my mind. So I guess now I'll be able to count them and see uh, what spline is back there. 410 gears though back there, man. So I don't know how this thing's gonna handle. It'll be probably good on the street, but on the freeway, it'll definitely suck because <laughs> I have a turbo 400. But uh, I have a couple options for that, you guys too. Uh, I have 373 gears that I can actually put in there as well. It'll be a little bit better. Um, but I also have a Furl 80E that I was actually just gonna run this turbo 400 and then uh, when the time comes, I can throw that Furl 80E in here and just this thing will be a monster with that overdrive as well. It'll just perform a lot better. Also too, you can also get a gear vendors as well and put on this uh, Turbo 400. So a lot of different options uh, we can do uh, in order to make this thing run efficient. But other than that, you guys, that is pretty much where I am going to start from the rear and kind of make my way up. So we're gonna start with the disc brake kit. And I think I'm gonna hold off on the uh, coilovers in the rear at least. I'm not gonna install them just yet, but you guys stay tuned for that because I might install them anyway. But uh, there's a couple of different reasons why. Uh, on the other side, I might have an issue with the rear tailpipe. Uh, it's actually really close to the tire and I actually have to take off the uh, the hanger and move the uh, the tailpipe over in order for that tire to fit. And there's definitely gonna have to be some modifications needed. I uh, notice on this side, it actually clears with no problem um, because the hanger is mounted a little bit different on this side. So I think I'm gonna go to an exhaust shop and have them match it on that side. And um, also too, I'm not sure if on that side, if that rear tailpipe is going to interfere with the coilover. So that's another reason why I might not install the coilovers in the rear just yeah. So other than that, you guys, uh, this video ended up probably being a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. But in order for you guys to get a good grasp on how this car started, where it came from, what was done to it up until now, I had to, uh, you know, give you the, the nitty gritty on um, what was going on with the car and uh, what happened to the car, where it is now and where do we start next. Anyways, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and call this video. I've been talking for a long time. Uh, I tried to, to get this video shorter, but in order for me to kind of explain everything on this car, what's been done to it, it takes some time. I mean, I just pretty much gave you three and a half years and 30 minutes. So if you guys can't sit with me for 30 minutes to listen to me talk, then I don't know what to tell you. So, uh, but anyways, man, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, get something to eat, get in. It's cold in here. Even with the heaters running, it's still cold as heck. But uh, again... If you're new to the channel, definitely think about subscribing, y'all. Hit that notification bell. All that good stuff, y'all. My name is Mr. Griffin23. Big things coming for this car right here, man. And I am so excited to get this thing on the road. And uh, shoot, it's going to be one, one heck of a summer, you guys. All right? Mr. Griffin23, out of here. Deuces. You are watching a master of work. On the beans.com.